I am Ahmed Hassab. I'm here today with you for the Rhino Tips and Tricks tutorial. Um, I'm a lecture assistant at the American University in Cairo and senior architect at Engineering Consultants Group, um, authorized Rhino trainer. Um, actually, I'm working with Rhino since 2008, something like this. When Zahadid was building and designing a building in Egypt, I was doing an internship with the Egyptian consultant responsible um, for the building um, and so on. Uh, today, I'm going with you through Rhino. I hope we have enough time to do a tutorial, an exciting tutorial. Uh, I'm happy to receive your questions, uh, not just through the session, but any time you would like. Um, let me start by sharing my screen. I'll show you where you can find me, where you can send me your questions. And um, after the session, I'll send you Rhino files uh, Yes, there will be a recording on YouTube. You can find it easily on our channel on YouTube. Uh, and I'll send Rhino files where you can use it when we finish. Through the class, just listen to me. Just watch what I'm doing. Um, I'm here today to teach you how to learn, how to have your learning path. It is more important than just teaching you some examples. So... Today, I'll, I'll, I'll get you on the path of learning, how to learn, how to have your own customized learning path through Rhino, so you become skilled um, as fast as you can. Okay, so let's start by sharing my screen at first. Now you can see my own screen. Okay. So... By sharing my screen, this is my website. You can go for hasab.info. Uh, this is where you can find me easily. Uh, we, you can just write hasab.info, H-A-S-S-A-B. Um, I'm mainly I'm working in digital fabrication and so on, the American University case since 2014, as I remember. Um, so I used to ask my questions, uh, my students a question before we start any workshop. Um, why do you intend to learn Rhino? Why you would like to learn Rhino? So you must have an answer. And the answer is not to use it in your university degree or to use it uh, to design a building or to draw something that can be visualized. But we started using Rhino a long time ago just because it gives you the possibility to do digital fabrication as Rhino is an nervous modeling, not just meshes and what i mean by nervous modeling um i'll start like by the general generic introduction of the interface what is rhino why to learn rhino and how to learn rhino how to read the commands how to understand the interface how to manipulate the commands how to go through the toolbars and so on and then we will start so now it is just an introduction about the session itself what is rhino why to learn rhino what capabilities do rhino have how I can get benefits from learning Rhino and so on. Um, like if I just draw a sphere as this one. Before Rhino, I used, I started using Rhino like in uh, Rhino 3, something like this. So in the past, when, when you draw something in Rhino, you will see this highlighted segment and the other segments, but now, in Rhino 7, if you go to a wireframe, you will just see this line. So why is this? The point is in using Rhino, if I converted this nervous modeling into mesh, the point is in using Rhino, Rhino is a nervous modeling technique. So it is using a nervous equation. We started and let's say they started using Rhino because a nervous equation will help you in a digital fabrication phase because it is something understandable. It is just a mathematical equation, but the meshes is not helpful at all in the past. Nowadays, there is like 3D printing. You can print whatever you would like, but the other digital fabrication techniques can be done through a meshes. It can, but it is so difficult, but using a nervous surface is more, much better. The point is when you use a meshes, it is a domestic information. I'll Let's, let's agree that I'll be telling you my experiences, not the technical terms. So if you, would, if you would like to know the technical term itself, you can just go for Rhino help and search for it. But now I'm giving you direct my own experience and how I feel it. So 
the meshes is just a domestic data where you can find the vertices, the edges, and the faces, but the nervous is a mathematical equation where you can see the object itself. And this, the one on the right, is more helpful into digital fabrication. In the past, when they started the nervous equation, like a, a car company was building the car in a country, and when they moved to other country, the, the car wasn't so matched. So they started to innovate like a mathematical equation based modeling so they can do the same car in very in different locations so this is how an urban equation started and then it is implemented in a lot of softwares and finally in Rhino. so this is the first point to consider we are learning Rhino because it opens the possibility for digital fabrication when you integrate bra super and other um, scripting techniques in my masters i have uh, developed like four plugins for data extraction for fabrication. They are not unfortunately available on Food for Rhino as I'm using them for commercial uses only, but you can do your own uh, plugins by just using the Grass Super Basic script, but it will be like slow. And if you move to using Python and any other scripting language, uh, it will do the processing more faster. So going back to the website you can see a lot of possibilities that i went through for digital fabrication and the portfolio isn't helpful enough but the point is to, to i used to tell my students you have to know what i have done using the software so you can imagine what you can do so I just go for portfolio and look for possibilities that i done so you can ask me um, on the score later on how to do it uh, and i'll give you tips and tricks it's fine and to join my Discord, or you can join this Digital Futures Discord, it's fine. Uh, and I'll send the files. But if you go uh, in more reparameterized, you can go to the community, join now, and this will take you to, um, uh, to a server where you can find the technical support channel. I'm giving, as an authorized McNeil trainer, I'm giving technical support and just for free for anyone. So if you have any questions, any time, you can just send your questions in the technical support and I'll answer you. You can find me easily through Facebook, LinkedIn and so on, but it is so hard to answer you on social media, but on technical support channels more better because my team can help you as well. Okay, this is the first part of our talk today. So the next point is, um, when you start using the software and you just open Rhino, you will have it like this. It is four viewport. The, there is top, front, and right, and perspective. I know there are some people have a basic knowledge using Rhino, but I give tips and tricks like glimpses very fast. So I'll use magnifier for this. Why I'm going to use magnifier, well known. So firstly, if you would like to enlarge any uh, any viewport from these viewports, you can just double click on the viewport name and then it will be enlarged and double click again, you can small this viewport again. So when I double click this one, I can move between these viewports by going down. There is perspective top, front and right, and you can select any one of them and this will move you between um, the different viewports. So I'll draw anything just for visualization. So you can recognize while I'm moving in between the different um, tabs and platforms and so on. Uh, this is something, I know it is something very easy to do. And if, if we like years and years ago when Dupai started and they started doing these futuristic buildings, I was, you know, at this time they were just using very few commands like two to three commands to do the building. And people were shocked. Wow, how they how they done this? And it was so easy. The point is to discover and explore the software. Anyway, when you double click on perspective, so you have this enlarged viewport. And if you would like to move to other viewport in the left bottom, there is top, front, and right. So this is a wireframe mode. And to move between display modes, you can go for the the, for the window name, it's right, and then there is a small arrow. Just press this arrow. There is different uh, viewport styles. There is shaded viewport mode, there is rendered, there is ghosted, and a lot of others. You can go for anyone you'd like. But 
from my point of view, when you are doing modeling, don't go for any viewport rather than the shaded mode, as shaded mode is mostly preferred where you can find everything. And if you'd like to add or customize your own viewport, it's fine. There is some people prefer to work in the, in the rendered mode. And so if you go for display, and if you use this one and go for display, so you have display checked. So it is there now. You can change the background color to any color you would like. You can have the shadows on or off. I'm, I'm using RTX. Uh, RTX 2060, if you don't use and you have a complicated model, don't uh, turn on the shadows. This will make it very difficult for you to maneuver through the modeling. Um, and there is surface edges. If you look to the model, there is the ending of the face. If this is a face, this is a polysurface. I'm still in the introduction. This is a face, so turning on the ISO curves is the curves that you see here and the edges is these edges. So what is ISO curves and what is edges? If you remember, when I draw this sphere and in the shaded mode, this sphere was like a curve. So there is a curve and there is ISO curves. The curve highlighted right now is the curve uh, input for the nervous equation but the other curves the iso curves it is just to visualize the 3d dimension of the object for you okay so the iso curves is just to visualize but the surface edges it is something important for you to know okay so and moving forward what is important to know while using Rhino. What is most important while using Rhino to know is where I can find the commands. So there is a lot of other softwares like 3D Max and Revit and so on. If you don't know where to find the icon, you can't go through the software because it is stacked somewhere inside other tab or command and you have to know where to dig for it. But using Rhino, there is a lot of possible ways to find the command. Firstly, everything is stacked here on the left in this compact toolbar. You can find everything in these icons. And the same commands is available in these tabs. Uh, standard, C plane, set view, display, select viewport, and so on. So any tab of these ones contain all the commands. And all the commands again is available up there here. So if you prefer to like search by name, you can find it easily here. And lately, lastly, last, uh, where to find the commands, you can just write down the command. So if you are using, let's say AutoCAD and you know there is a Phyllis, so you can just type down Phyllis and you can find a Phyllis command. Um, Please keep muted. There is someone is unmuted. Um, please, uh, uh, I stop sharing. I have to mute. Um, I'm not an admin. So, Ms. Bach, can you please mute Mahdi? He is unmuted. He's disturbing me. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm using the software, <clears throat> Maddie, please, you're unmuted. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's more much better. So if I'm using Rhino and I have like previous experience using any other software as AutoCAD, a SketchUp, 3D Max or whatever, and I know uh, I can do extrude, I can just write down extrude. When I write Hi. down extrude, yeah. Um, hi, uh, just a minute. Uh, can you pull away your Zoom screen, uh, your camera view, because we're seeing it twice on YouTube? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's small now. I used okay. to make it bigger while giving my session. Yeah, we, we already <laughs> we already see the Zoom preview, so we're seeing your screen twice. Ah, you see it twice. Okay. Yeah. 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 So if you can just pull it away. Thank you. So if you have uh, experience from any other software like SketchUp, 3D Max or whatever, and you know the command itself. So if you know that if you have a curve and you would like to have a mass, you can just go for extrude. So in Rhino, you can just write down extrude and it will give you 
a lot of possible extrude options that you can select. And if you don't know how to spell the command itself, you can just write down any letters that you know, and the command will, <clears throat> and the software will give you the possibilities. So if I just write down extrude like XTR, it will give me like what possibilities are you looking for? There is extrude point surface curve and so on. So you don't need to know the command itself accurately. And the last point that is most important for you to know, uh, I'll start the mag use the magnifier right now. So let's focus on this toolbar on the left. This toolbar on the left, when you go for any command, you can see its name. So it's fine. If you don't know how to use it, you can search on Google what is control point curve, what is, is circle center radius, what is ellipse, and so on. This is the first point. And then um, there is some icons, some commands that can be used using left click and other commands that can use using right click. So you don't need to remember, you just need to go for the component for the icon and just read the text given to you. Boolean union, it is just left click. But working with meshes, there is from mesh to poly surface and convert back to meshes and so on. So you can use left click or right click with some commands. And the other trick is there is a small, <clears throat> there is a small arrow with the icons. You can press any small arrow from these ones and get out this toolbar. So what the benefits of getting this toolbar away? Um, this one is like lines. This one is more about curves. This one is more about surface creation. And this one is more about surface tools and so on. So getting out the toolbar will help you to be specifically um, on the line with what package of commands, what category I'm in. And this would be helpful. And there is other point very important. What is it? Why do the commands is like this? When you start using Brian, you have to bring the surface creation toolbar. You have to enlarge your screen and start reading the icons. So if you go for this icon, it is a surface from three corner points. And you can notice that there is a blue surface and there is four white points because this is a surface from three or four points and if you go for this one it's a surface from planar curves this is why you have two white curves surface from network this is why you have a white network of lines and then a blue surface so the blue represents the outcomes and the white represents the inputs so going to loft there is a parallel lines, parallel cross sections. You can see it um, just uh, from edges. So you have the white edges all around. There is patch and there is a lot of others. Let's say there is a sweep to rails. You can see two rails and one cross section and the same surface with one rail. So now you can understand that you have to, you can go for any icon. There is left click and there is right click for some icons and every just small arrow of these ones will bring you uh, a toolbar and each icon uh, represents the inputs and the outputs and what else using a, i'll enlarge my screen i used to enlarge perspective i used to do modeling in perspective because we and they started using rhino as it is so helpful for you to manipulate the idea and think how to do it so it is more easier for you to get in touch with your model. So let's say, as example, I'm still in the generic phase. And what is the benefit of this generic? It is so helpful for you to have your own learning path. It is helpful for you to know how to use the software itself, rather than just following my tips and tricks. And then we will start in a few minutes. So. Let's ask a question. If I have these lines and then I would like to do a surface and I don't know how to do it, I'll just zoom in and look for the toolbar. So if I'd like to do something with parallel curves, what I'm going to do, um, I have here like these kind of parallel curves. It is like parallel white lines. 
it is similar to this. So maybe I use loft. Just I'm just guessing. So if I'm going to use loft, and I don't know how to use loft, so I'm recommending that you just go and pick loft. I press loft now. So don't just do anything. Just go for the toolbar. It is asking you to select curves, and when when it is say curves, and there is S letter, it is different than just curve. When in, when you are going with, let's say, as I'll I'll give you an example, like sweep one ray, you can select multiple curves. Um, sweep two rays, you can select multiple curves. But in in some other um, uh, commands, you can select multiple curves. So when do I know to select multiple or just one? I just have to follow the command bar. So it is saying select curves to loft. I'll start selecting the curves. Okay. So the point is, if it is by logic working, it will work in Rhino. So I used to think how to do it, what this surface is, um, what is the sequence of the surface. So if I have like an architectural form at this one, let's say as example, this one. If I have this example, this one, we will go through this one today. Um, I'll just admit the people in the waiting room. Okay, if we are going to do this one, I have to ask myself what this one looks like. And if I look for, I go for the shaded mode, make it better. Um, what this one is, looks like, it looks like I have a surface and this surface is going to the up and then it is going back down like a few little. So it is, the, looks like there is something and it is going up and then it is going back down. This is how I recognize the surf. And then I start thinking how to do it. Uh, so how to convert this surface to assemble geometry, and then how to convert this assemble geometry into curves, and then what command can I use, and so on and so on. So this is, what, this is how I, I'm thinking and looking for uh, alternatives and commands to help me. So I selected the curves in sequence. I think I need it like this. So this is why I'm selecting them in sequence. And you have to know that Rhino is following your steps. If you are selecting the, the bottom curve and the upper curve and then the middle curve, it will generate a surface that, uh, uh, that take this uh, sequence into consideration. And you've just selected them uh, by hierarchy. It will take them into consideration. So, so let's go. It is asking me for drag scene point. I'm still like introducing the software it is asking me for to drag the same point to adjust the same point to adjust is this point so i'm just following the software and it, it say if it is fine just press enter so i press enter it will give me other toolbar so this is my first time to use the software. I'll be doing like this, exploring the possibilities in this way. This is a better way to have your own learning path. And then it will give you this tool power where there is a style, normal, loose, uh, tie. And you can see um, it just generates a surface with different considerations. It is a mathematical equation and any variable uh, will end by a different result. So changing the variables will change the result. So you can just go for different options and you see the styles. And there is a closed loft. So what just happened, when I just selected closed loft, it, if you remember, I selected this one and then this one and then this one. So this is the first curve I selected and this is the last curve I selected. So when I selected closed curve, it just, take the first one to the last one. So this is a closed pulley service. In conclusion, what we have right now, what we have right now is that we can easily go for the toolbar. You can go for the toolbar, just hold on for a second on any icon. It will tell you what this icon is. And if you can use this icon by pressing left click, it will tell you. And if right click is available, it will tell you as well. And if you selected any, I, I'll, just, uh, I'll just draw very simple curve right here and manipulate this curve. Don't, yeah, just wait, I'll, 
tell you how to do it, but you have to imagine the possibilities at first. So if I would like to do something like this, I I see there is a sweep to raise. The icon is like blue surface, and there is like two rails and one cross section, and it looks like what I have. I'm thinking of how to have like a vase. So I go for sweep to raise. It will tell me, select first rail. So it's two rails. So this is the first rail, and then it just asked me select the second rail. In some commands, it will ask you to press enter to move for the next step, but right now it is just moving you to the next step. So you have to follow the command bar. It will save a lot of time and effort and hustle while learning the software. So selecting the second rail, and then it asks you to sweep, uh, select the sweep shapes. I select this one, press enter when done. I just press done. So there is some options. We will not go through them right now, but I can just press okay. So I have the outcome by just following the command. I, and this is my first time to use it. I don't know how it is working, but just following the steps is very helpful. So, and there is something else. If you are using the CAD softwares, like um, Autodesk softwares and any other softwares, there is, you need to work with a scale. You need to work with units. Um, and so on. So working with units, let's take AutoCAD as example, like a baseline to just discuss. Um, there is units, millimeters, and we here in East Africa, um, we are using um, meters, uh, metric. So I'll go for meters as example, and then uh, I'd like to hide this one. Okay, uh, I hide meeting controls as well. Um, it is meters right now, and then I press okay. Okay, it is asking me, are you going to change the model? I press just yes. You have to um, you have to fix the units before starting. So I just select everything and delete it as I have to set the units before starting. And if I didn't set the units before starting and I change it, let's say to centimeters and then press okay, it will ask me. So if I just started, I press no or yes, this is, um, you have to decide this. So there is, as example, meters, you have to work with units. And for the snapping, there is a snap, like uh, you have a snap in AutoCAD, you have a snap in 3D Max, not the others. Um, uh, but if you are using 3D Max, Autodesk 3D Max, Snap is not so advanced, but Rhino looks like AutoCAD. It is the same CAD system. It is the same accuracy as Rhino is using in like mechanical design and production and so on. I myself just use Rhino before for jewelry, for designing some yachts, um, some fashion and so on. So um, it is so precise. And actually there is a tolerance variable that you can use to make the, the interface, the software itself, the Rhino nervous equation itself more accurate or less accurate, but just don't go for it right now. If you are a basic user, it will be like a hassle for you. Um, so uh, here in the bottom, there is grid snap, ortho, planner, uh, planner, all snap, smart track, and gumball. If I just deselected all of these ones and close this toolbar. Using uh, the software, you have to know that grid snap will snap to the grid on the C plane ground, but I don't prefer to use it. And there is ortho. Um, ortho will strike you to be like a 90 degree, but I don't prefer to use it as you can just press shift and it will strike you to 90 degrees. <clears throat> and when you stop using shift, it will go back like freely where you would like to go. Planner will make it everything planner. So what is very, very important is to use OSNAP. OSNAP is the same CAD snap system, the same snap in AutoCAD, where you can snap to the end, near point, midpoint, center, intersection, perpendicular, and so on. And when you hold just for a second on any one of them, it will write down the full description, intersection object snap, perpendicular object snap, and so on. 
And when I can benefit from snapping, if I'm going to do copy as example, I can just snap to the end and then copy to the end and, and, and so on and so on. So you can just snap, you can snap to a midpoint, you can snap to an extension of a point. And how to do, how to snap to an extension of a point if you go for smart track, like smart tracking, it will track your movement. So if I selected this and then press copy, I can pin to something. I believe, yeah, you can see this white line. It is a track. Uh, like in the past, while using 3D Max SketchUp in, in other software, we used to draw something as a guideline. And when you move your object or do whatever you want, then you delete that guideline object. But in Rhino, there is a smart track will will help you to move along this edge. And this would be so helpful where you can go, you can select like in a midpoint, uh, you can go like a line to an edge. And this will be so helpful while doing like, a mechanical design, jewelry design, fashion design, yacht design, and so on, you, you will need this smart track. You can write down move to move. You can write down copy to copy. You can write down any command, you know, from, from AutoCAD, from 3D Max SketchUp, or any other modeling software that you are using. You can write down the command you are using, and you will find it in Rhino. It is well-mapped software. Uh, but there is an easy option to use, like Gumball. And like 10 years ago, Rhino didn't have a Gumball. I used to set up TSP line inside Rhino. So I have these kind of uh, cruisers where I can move it. And I have this rotation option and scale option. Very easy option to use while modeling. Because Rhino will help you in the conceptual design, in the thinking phase, form finding phase and it will help you in the drafting and construction documentation or production documentation phase. It is helpful in the both of them, but in the first stage while you were thinking, Gumball would be so helpful. So what benefits of using Gumball? You can just move using Gumball. You can rotate using Gumball. You can scale using Gumball. Oh, I'm sorry. Just selecting this will help you to scale using Gumball. So <coughs> you can scale rotate and move so just for now uh, there is red green and yellow if you look uh, and blue answer if you look here there is on the left um, bottom left there is x y z coordinates so red is x and green is y and blue is z and so on so this is moving into x y z so this quarter circuit quarter sphere is for rotation and this boxes is for scaling. And if you would like to move like I'm using meters, so if I'd like to move like three meters, I just press double click on this one and write down 10 meters. So this is like 10 meters. If I'd like to rotate like 45 degrees, I'll write 45 degrees, it's a bit for five degrees and so on. And so the scale and everything. So, and what other benefits do Gumball have? If I'd like to move in X, Z plane, am I going to just move like this and then like this? No. You can see this plane where you can see green and, and red. If you move this plane, it is moving in X, Y. You can see it in the bottom left. And if you just move like this, it became blue, red. So this is like X, Z plane, and this is green, blue. It is Y, Z plane, and so on. And what other benefits? You can just alt with move, it is a copy. Alt with scale, it is a copy. Alt with rotate, it is a copy. So you can do copy while using Gumball. You can do any other basic transformations. And lastly, um, before they invented Grasshopper, <laughs> as example, I'm using Rhino. I started using Rhino when Grasshopper was just very few commands, but nowadays it is highly advanced software. But back at this time, um, with no Grasshopper or with very, 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 very basic Grasshopper interface, there were like a record history where the where we used to use. If I'm, I have this one, and let's say as an example, we still in the exploration phase. I'll go deeper with details right now in a few minutes. 
Um, and I know I take a lot of time, but it is so important for you if you are a first time user, how to go through the software and customize your own learning path. And you can do this when you know the capabilities, where to find them, where to search, how to maneuver and so on. Um, I'll just go for Loft. 70% of the services you'll be doing, um, you will use Loft. And if you are just a fresh user, intermediate user, I recommend you to use Loft or uh, like Sweep Rails. This is best two options for you as a basic or intermediate. But if you are an advanced level, just go for anyone you'd like, go for network or any other one. So using Loft, I select it like in sequence and then I press enter. So I have this kind of result. But the point is, if I just selected this curve and then move this curve a little bit, there is nothing happened. So what is the benefit in using record history? Let's say for now, I select record history and then I will go for loft. It is asking me to select the curves and record history is bold. So it is still working. I'll select one, two, three and then enter, and then enter. So it is not bold right now. If I just moved any curve of these curves, it is like a parametric outcomes, as if you are using Grasshopper, but it is very simple way. If you have like a hundred curve and you are still thinking, maybe Rhino is very easy to use, and maybe you will change your mind. What I mean by changing my mind, if I can manipulate the curve itself. I can open the control points, change these control points. But the point is, if I'd like to replace the curve, I can't. Because the steps is recorded into the RAM itself. Not, you, can't, you don't have access to it. And this is why sometimes we have to use cross regarding recording history and using parameters and so on. Um, this is fair enough for the introduction. So now you can open the software, go for layers or whatever you'd like. So I'll just working with Rhino. Let's say as example, um, I'd prefer to start with this slide. If I'd like to design this building, this specific building, how I can do modeling, I have to think what this is, how to do the modeling phase. So I take a print screen, as I used to do with my students. I enlarge it. And then, yes, I bring the bin and start drawing. If I'm using the, let's say, the red bin. What I see right now, I can see if there is few edges, yes. You can see edges, you can see edges. There is clear edges that you can see, yes. And there is faces, this is a face, yes. So you have to do few analysis of the object you would like to draw. You have to take it down to the primitives of its form and then start thinking how to do the modeling. So it is just few faces together. There is no better way to do the modeling just once. It is just all of them just once. Um, but usually it is better to just think how to do it at first. There is must a smart way and then you can start modeling. I'll send these files when we finish so you can go back and test your model. You can have your own modeling here anyway and then you can test it again. I'll send the files where you can find the curves and I'll send the image and the outcomes. And as well, there is, I have these tabs open. Uh, while working with my students, uh, 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 yeah, this one. While working with my students, I used to send them the Sketchfab file. So using Sketchfab is somehow helpful for you to explore the model. So when we go with, um, a very complicated model or a very easy model, you can easily see the compositions, uh, where is the surfaces, where is the edges and so on. Um, if your Vega card isn't um, strong enough to maneuver like a Rhino model, you can use my 
um, Sketchfab model. I understand that maybe we have students from around the world that they don't have a very strong Vega card and so on. You can uh, use my uh, Sketchfab link. And if you have a better Vega card, you can just open the file and um, look into the model itself. So if I'd like to do something like this, there is no better way. There is a lot of possible solutions you can go with any solution of them. I just tell you one solution, but you have to understand there is a lot of uh, possible others. So how to do this building? It is very easy. Um, the first point, you, can, you have just to drag and drop the image itself into the file, and then select picture, and then draw the surface. So now I have a surface, and the building itself is mapped onto the surface. So if I'd like to, to rotate this image, I can easily rotate the image. I can just click and write down 90. It will be rotated and so on. You can scale, scale it down using Gumball and so on. I'm, I'm not going to do it precise as it is not, you know, it is not our goal now. I'm just will teach you how um, to think how to find a form finding way, a modeling way. I used to just say it's a modeling strategy. It's a modeling technique, methodology. You have to think like for a methodology, what this is, how to do it and so on. And as example, if I have this image, but I have my one prepared, it's fine. I just go to copy and I can just start working as it will be selected and then moved and so on. If I'm aligning a curve, if I am just going to front as example and I'm aligning set of curves to an image, it can be moved as what has happened just right now. It should be the same scale um, in the same position and so on. So I have to lock the image. You can see this lock. So there is a small, if you open this toolbar, there is a visibility and there is a lock. You can lock the object. You can unlock a specific object or unlock everything or unlock inverted and so on. You have just to go through this visibility toolbar. It is so important for you so you can maneuver in the software. So if I have this one, I just lock the image. So I can select the image right now. So when I start right drawing down my curves, it will still the same um scale okay and then what this building is it is you can see as i just told you a few minutes ago there is possible edges right here and and there is surfaces in between this there is a surfaces um i just if you don't remember the red is the edges and the blue is the surfaces so i'll just Let's say the plan is just ellipse somehow. I'm receiving a few questions right here. So I check this questions later. Yeah, it's fine. There is no questions. It's possible to import AutoCAD files. Yes, you can import AutoCAD files. You can import 3D mesh from 3D Max from any other software or interact with any other software. Um, I'll answer your question more deeply when I finish this exam. Um, in 2016, I got a project. It was like one kilometer and a half uh, facade, double curve facade screen, and they couldn't do it like a BEM modeling. Um, and they able to do it like by meshes, but it is not helpful for fabrication. So I made it in Rhino and so on. Let's discuss this when I finish this exam. Um, okay, um, I'll assume that the plan is just an ellipse. So the ellipse. I'll go here. If I don't, if I'm Ahmed, I don't know where to find the ellipse. I'll just go here and um, hold a second till it tells me there is an ellipse. I will not use this ellipse. You have to open this small toolbar and then look for the possibilities. Why don't you? There is an ellipse from a center. There is ellipse from diameter and more other. So if you don't use this technique of exploring the toolbars, the commands, and so on, you will know a few commands that someone teaches you. But if you just explore the software, as I'm telling you right now, you will have your own technique in a very few um, days. So let's start with diameter. 
as example, I'll assume, yeah, I'll assume that this building was like an ellipse. Its plan is just an ellipse. So um, I'll unlock again the image. I'll move it just a little bit higher, and then we'll lock it again. And then I have my own ellipse. So the point now, this is ellipse. When I selected the ellipse, I should go back for the toolbar. It will tell me this is one closed curve added to selection. And if it is multiple curves, it will tell me if I selected multiple curves, it is one curve point, 12 curves, one surface added to selection. You have to understand what you are holding. This is an open surface. This is open surface. This is open surface. If I just join them, this is one poly surface. You have to follow the command bar. Every input will need a different processing methodology. So you have to read the command bar so you can understand what are you holding on if you are a first time user. And if this is an ellipse, you remember when you went for your primary school, they told us there is a line and this line is a first degree curve. If you don't remember line, just straight line, it's two points and a distance, and it is a first degree curve. And there is a pulley line, it is the same as, but it is multiple first degree equations. Rhino is a mathematical equation, and to be able to use it, you have to understand this point. And a circle is a second degree equation. Why it is a second degree equation? Because it is a multiple arches that is connected to. <coughs> Sorry for that. I just take my AstraZeneca vaccine a few days ago. <laughs> okay. So a circle is a second degree curve. So it is a multiple um, arches and manipulating any arch, you will have a kink. And a kink is, a, let's say it's a broken point where the curve itself just broken. So this one, it's a second degree curve. I can just explode. If you look for the icon, um it is just like if you have an explosion and join it is looks like if you have plus adding something and if you go for pulling it looks like you have something to pull in difference and so on it is very helpful for you to go through the icons anyway let's continue um and if circle ellipse and so on these kind of primitive Closed curves is a second degree curve where you can explode this. And if it is exploded, it is multiple curves. Let's say when I move this point again, it is cracked. You can easily explode this. And if I just move this point again, it is cracked. So you can explode it. So you can't use a second degree curve. In the past, it was so tricky to use a second degree curve, but right now round seven, you can use it easily. In the past, if you just exploded an ellipse, it will be divided into four arches, but right now it will not be divided until you started moving a point and cracking the geometry. But this uh, control point curve, okay, let's go for control point curve right now. This control point curve is an herbus line. It is a third degree. I'm not sure if it is a third or higher as from third to 11th degree. You can have a variety of options, but they all can't be divided to its primitive segment. It is just one continuous equation. And we used to say it's one degree, second degree, and just third degree. And it increases automatically while manipulating a curve or a surface or anything else. So remembering that nervous equation is first, second, and third degree. And working on this building, I prefer to use a third degree curve. So I will rebuild the curve. When you rebuild the curve, there is point to count. There is existing number of points, and it is a point count, and there is a degree. So this is ellipse. This is why the degree right now is a second degree curve. And here I can write down how I'm going to convert this curve. 
So I will just write down like nine points and third degree. Why third degree? To have a continuous curve that can be divided to its primitive segments. And why it is nine? Just, I, I had it a lot of times before. So nine is the preferred number of points. But if it is your first time to do a specific building, um, how you can think of the number of points. If this is an ellipse and I needed somewhere by the end, it is somehow pointed more spiky by the end. So I had like an odd number of points. So by the end, I had an, a point that I can pull away and it will help me. Yeah. So now I have this set of points. And yeah, let's go for the front view. Now I have my curve and I have the image and I'd like to start working on the building, but the curve is like black and the building, it is not clear enough. I can't see it. So if I wear you, I'd select this curve and go start a new layer. I write down its curves and then I right click and it change object layer. So it is on this layer right now. I'll double click on curves. So I'm using curves right now as a main layer. Just selecting the color. And I'll use any color I prefer, like red color. So it is red right now. I'll move the curve. And then there is a show object control point. Actually, you can just press F10. But the point is, there is some people have multimedia in their keyboard. So they have to use function F10. But rather than you can just go for um, show control points. So I have the control points right now, these kind of points. OK. What I'm willing to do, I'm going to just start moving these points to have a curve that represents the service. I'm not doing it like in high precision, but I'm going to tell you how to be able to do it. But we have to discuss something before continuing and manipulating the curve. If you have a curve like this one, what this curve is, it is two points and a distance. And if I am in the front view, this curve, I can see just a point. It is just a point. Wow. You have to remember that this is not a point. It's a curve. If you just moved one of them, you will have a curve that is not perpendicular. So just take into consideration while manipulating this, you can just select a point and start moving. This would make a problem. If I were you, I just have this selection box and move it like this. And if you are an AutoCAD user, if you are selecting from right to left, it will select anything that it touches. But from left to right, it will select just the contained. So moving this point here, I'll have this like a continuous curve that represents the building edge. OK, this is the first curve. And then for the second curve, I'll use Alt and move. Yes, interesting. And then open the control points. And again, I'm going to move this curve to be fitting along the edge. So there, there might be some people will ask you, hey, I'd like to add more points. Can I add more points? Yes, you can add more points. But how to do it? It's fine. If you would like to insert control point, you can just write down insert control point. And then you can add. And if you'd like to delete, you can just select and press delete. But right now, we are not going to insert or delete. I have these two curves. I'll add one more curve. And again and again, just open the control points and start moving the curve itself. Here, like this, I have my curve. And like this, I have my curve. And I start moving the control points. So I can have almost the surface itself. There is like wait command. You can use wait in Rhino. Um, but right now, I'm not going to use it. It's fine. Um, OK, welcome. 
there is some questions I'll answer later. Yeah. And it's recorded, it's fine. Because there is a question in the chat, yeah. Um, so right now I have the curves. So going back again, I have now the curves that represent as a surface I would like to use or to draw. Can you imagine how many curves you have to, to reach the final surface, the final outcome? It is not precise, but it is doable. You can do it easily. Anyway, so right now, uh, the next step is how to do the surface itself. So like if I'd like to do a surface and this is my first time, I just go for a surface creation toolbar. I will open the toolbar. I know there is some people will say there is a tab right here. But if you are a first time user, this tab is somehow synchronized with this tab. So using these ones will change this one as well. So it will be so confusing for you. So I recommend you have to just open this small toolbar and take it aside. It will be more much helpful for you. OK. If I have these parallel curves, what I'm going to use, I prefer, I recommend loft. It is just very easy to use. And as you see, it is parallel lines, the white lines, and the yellow is the outcomes. You can just go through the whole icons. Is there any other possible way? If I have these parallel lines, no, there is no other possible way. This is why looking into the components is so important and helpful for you to have your own learning path and start learning so fast than just typing down the command name. Anyway. Now I have the lines, the curves, and I'm going to create the surface. I'll go for loft, then select curves. You remember when you have S, this means you can create more than just one. I'll select one, two, three, and then enter. And then it is asking me for the seams. So this is the second time we see the seams. Why when we are using loft, there is seams. What seam mean? Okay. Let's skip the command. If you are working with like an open curve, how the mathematical equation is, as I mentioned before, it is all just a mathematical equation. And if I'm working with a mathematical equation with an open curve, what it is? It is a start point. It is asking you for a start of a curve. Degree, it's a third degree. I'll say it is, this is a third point. And then next point, um, I'm doing right now, I'm just putting down the second point. And then I put the end point. And then I press enter when done. So you have to remember what we just done. What we just done, we had a point as a start point and we had a point as an end point. And then we have a direction. Yes, but direction is not important. Like if I told you this is the first point, you will just follow me. The mathematical equation will just follow me to represent what I'm doing. And then I will press the end point. But if it is a closed curve at this one, what a closed curve is? A closed curve is, let's just take a print screen. A closed curve is, uh, I'll go for the blue band, yes. A closed curve is, it is in the, in the mathematical equation. It is a start point, and then there is a direction in the equation itself. There is a direction that is, tell it go back to the same point. So there is a point. It can be a start point. It can be an end point, but it is the same point, yes. And there is something very important, the direction. If I just, if, if you are using a closed curve and I just give you the, just one point with no direction, you can't understand where is the curve or you can't as a math uh, mathematical equation describe the curve. I'm sorry for this mathematical intro, but why I'm telling you this. If this is a closed curve and you just went for loft, this seems, will define the direction. So if it is just all of them in the same direction, it will give you a result as example. And if all of them in the same direction, but 
one of them in the different direction, it will cause a problem because the direction is flipped. Okay, and what else? Like selecting the curves in the wrong sequence will cause you a different result. So loft is following your command. You have to decide what is the sequence, uh, what is the order of the curves, and what is the direction of the curves. You have to make sure you are moving in the right direction. There is a lot of problems may happen. And if you don't have a clear curve, you probably will not have a clear surface. They are just following each other. So right now, I just loft. I select just two curves, just for right now, and other two curves. OK, so I have these two separate open surfaces. I just go for the top left to see it. Yeah. And if I go back for the front line, I take again the curve I have, and I take it right here, and then open the curve, open the control points. Um, I move to other example after a few minutes. Just keep excited. Uh, so I have right now these curves. Yeah, and if I take a copy, the same. It's the same methodology. Um, and started moving these kind of curves right here and again right here. So some people will ask me how to select multiple points. Just use shift. And if you select the control, you will deselect. So selecting multiple points will be done using shift. Um, so right now I have my own curve. OK. Uh, the less points you have, the more international deformation that is possible. The more points you have, the more restricted deformations you will have. So the curve will not be like fine tuned and the outcome will not be as well. So I have my two curves like this, and then I'll go for loft, select my curves. And so I have my surfs. That's very interesting. And then how I'm going to cap the file. I can see here there is a different surface. These surfaces is made by loft. This is why you can see the ISO curves, very regular ISO curves. But this one is not made by loft. This is why you can see the ISO curve is just intersecting with the outline. And what this remembers you, if you just zoomed in, if you remember this toolbar, this is a patch. Patch is as this is. It is just ISO curves, just there is some ISO curves. It is not following any specific rule. Okay. Um, I don't prefer using patch, but sometimes you have to. But if you are moving to Grasshopper, patch is not helpful at all because patch, what patch is? I'll take this one here. I'll tell you one, what batch is after I just show you how to do it. You can just select the curve and then go for patch and just press OK. And you have a closed surface. And patch can consider any inputs, like a single point. I can have my own single point and then move this single point and select the single point with the curve and then patch and then OK. So I believe you can see the difference between the first time and the second time when I use the point as a guideline for the surface to follow. It is bombed up like for a few meters because of this point. Why I don't prefer using patch? As I told you, nervous equation is just an equation. <laughs> it is just a mathematical equation, and all of this is just a presentation. So if I just control point N, wow, patch is, it is a whole surface, a rectangular surface, and this part is just available for presentation, and the rest is just hidden. But the equation still 
like a rectangular equation. And this would not be helpful if you used it in Grasshopper later on, because Grasshopper will recognize it like, like this. And when Grasshopper recognize it like this, you will not be able to draw any flow, any pattern or do any formation or flowing arraying or anything on the surface as you will not be restricted with what you see. You will be restricted with what the equation actually is. So you have, and I prefer to use loft again. And how to use loft in this closed double curved surface? It is, wow, how to do it? I take this, a copy here. And before I take a copy, uh, I prefer while working with like a third degree surfaces, curves or anything like this, I prefer, I recommend you to draw your own rectangle. Why? So I can take a copy anywhere I'd like. And by the end, I can just select the result. And when I move, I have something to snap to, okay. So how to use loft to generate a surface that can be used later on in Grasshopper to generate, as example, um, a pattern. And this would be so helpful and important in some advanced applications like this one. After what we are doing, if you look like here, this white surfaces is just, if you simplify the surface, it is just a set of curves. You can look for the edges as two rails for loft or two, two rails for a sweet rail. We didn't use sweet rail yet, but we are going to use it. But if it is loft, it is just two curves. And this one, it is just one curve, second curve by this and third curve right here and so on. And what about this pattern, I'll generate this surface and then use Grasshopper to generate that pattern. I can use flow along surface in Rhino, but maybe using Grasshopper would be so helpful. So why don't you have a surface that keep the possibilities for you? So loft, sweet rails is mostly preferred if you are going to use Grasshopper later on. And in Grasshopper, you can go for parametric house surface uh, morph, um, it will be so helpful for you to array whatever the, the pattern is you would like to use. Um, but we can't use attractors on it. And if you would like to use attractors for this kind of pattern, you can just go for launch box, extract the edges and get the center point, move it uh, up to the normals and then extrude to a point. Uh, just, it's just illustration for the people who are like a, who have like a middle um, experience using the software. Anyway, let's go back. How to do loft with this just one curve. Uh, what loft is? While using loft, you can have like an open curve as I just mentioned in the introduction, like this one, yes? And you can have a closed curve as I used like a few minutes earlier. Yes, and as example, if I use loft for this open curves, it's fine, it's working, yes. And if I use loft for this closed curve, it's working as well. So, but now I have just one curve. So my recommendation is, if you would like to use Rhino for design, for documentation, you have to believe that Rhino, the command, how many commands you, you know is not the key. The key is how you are thinking. The key is your thinking methodology. So how I can use just one curve to generate a surface that minimum input is two curves. I'll split that curve. It is so simple. I'll go for split and then I'll go for point and then I'll draw one point and other point. So I have right now two curves. So loft, first curve and second curve and so on. So right now I have a, curve, a surface that is generated and it respects these two edges. 
let's say as example, I rebuild this surface 20 by 20. So you can see a lot of ISO curves. You can see right now, it is respecting the surface edges. I can see there is a deflection right here because I increased the ISO curves too much, but I'm increasing them. So you can see it is respecting the edges it's respecting the input. So if you are using it in Grasshopper, it will respect the boundary. But this one, it is still not respecting the edges. So it will not help you. Anyway, I select this one. And let's say as example, I need it in the middle more bumped up. So I delete this one again and I'll draw other curve. I'll I should have my snap or snap on, and then I should have end point on. So I, I snap here and again, I snap here. So this is a curve, but this is just first degree curve with two points. So I rebuild this curve and make it like five points and then open the control points and start like deforming the curves. Okay. It looks fine. Let's try using loft, 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 loft. And yes, I have my surface and it's totally working. And if I rebuild this surface and increase the number of edges, it will work as well. As you see, the ISO curves is respecting the outer lines. And then I will move this surface considering the, the guideline I have. And then I will use zoom selected to zoom to that surface. This is how you can just model this kind of building and you have to draw a lot of curves to set these kind of surfaces. And if you would like to just attach these together, there is two possible ways. Um, as I said before, there is a lot of possible ways, but I just mentioned two of them now. One of them may going to work and the other may not. So let's say as example, I'm going to merge these two surfaces. I'll select this surface and this is surface. So it is merged, as you can see, I'll merge. When I write down merge surface, merge surface, you can see it right here. It will ask me, is it smooth? I'll say yes. Tolerance, as I mentioned earlier, there is a modeling tolerance in Rhino. And then roundness, I just say one. I select these two curves, it is merged together. And if I'm going just to select these two surfaces and then join them, and then there is, as you have in AutoCAD, fill it curves, there is fill it edges. So I just fill it these edges and then I'll select the edge. So next three is just one. I'll keep it right now one. If you would like to change it, just press on one and then write down the radius you would like, but I'll keep it just one. I'll select the edge, press enter, it will give me like a presentation how this radius will be and done. You have it right now. And how the equation is generated or let's say updated is different. While using merge surface, it is different when used fillet edge. And fillet edge will generate poly surface that might cause problems when you go to Grasshopper, if you need Grasshopper later on, on the same project. And this one will not cause any problems because it is just one open surface. And it is so helpful for you to go on array pattern, extract edges, ISO curves. If I were you and I'd like to extract ISO curves that represent the surface, I go for Grasshopper actually. But if I don't know Grasshopper, if I don't have any experiences using Grasshopper, I can just rebuild this surface. And let's say as example, this one, if, if it is just three, I can see the transformation, yes. So this one can be like 25 and this one can be like 11. And yeah, so the horizontal ones is this one, I can, Later on, because it is just a rhino equation, I can extract that. I can go for curve, extract wireframe, so I can extract this wireframe. I can select the horizontal curves, so I can separate the vertical ones from the horizontal ones. So by the end, working with NURPSs will help you to get more much data to do what you would like. So, um, 
thank you. <laughs> I'm happy that you can understand my explanation. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, right now we just finish this specific example. I close the Rhino file and just you can ask me later on. I'll send these files um, later on. Uh, Okay, right now I'll answer the question that I got like two minutes ago uh, regarding the when and where can it be used with AutoCAD or not and so on. Uh, this is my website, as I told you earlier. I remember I have the project right here or not. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have it. Um, in 2016, I went, um, this is the first time when I joined ECG. It is like, um, multinational company here in Egypt and uh, they had a project and that project uh, they uh, it was like one kilometer and a half uh, the facade length and so they used 3d max for modeling the facade and it was like fantastic so the client asked them to go for fabrication and then they stuck we can't do it because it is just meshes if I'm using 3d max I can't import it into Revit why I can't import it into Revit. If you remember, when I draw the sphere and the mesh sphere, the mesh sphere is a lot of small components. It is, as I mentioned, it is a domestic information. So if you, if you have an urban sphere and you go for Revit, you can select, you can pick face. And so if it is a double curved surface, you can just pick the surface and you have it into Revit. You can go for mullions or whatever. You can use it for edge slab or what function do you need? But if it is uh, made in cross uh, in SketchUp, in 3D Max or any other meshing software, you can't bake a face because you have like millions of faces, hundreds of faces. And for one single double curved facade, you may have 2 million pieces. And this would not be helpful because you can generate a slab edge, you can select a curtain wall, and you can generate mullions and so on. This is why using Rhino is more helpful. And so um, I have to, at this time, um, there were like TSP lines for Rhino. It is not available right now. They, I think Autodesk just made TSP line available for Rhino when Zahadi started using Rhino. And when she died, they stopped. And so McNeil nowadays have sub D, I guess, I don't know. So because I started using TSP line like 12 years ago and now it, it just stopped. And why it this stop something, I don't know. Anyway, but back then at this time, I can use the meshes into Rhino and then use the TSP line because it is a meshing plugin to extract the edges and then generate a continuous guidelines that it can be used later like network surface and generate the surface again but as a nerves equation and then go back forever so from the beginning as i mentioned as and used to mention while working with rhino the point is how many commands do you know the point is you have to think and have a methodology a modeling technique a modeling methodology strategy some logical thinking and sequential like processing when you follow will have the final result it is just it so let's go for the second example um before going to the moving to the second example i'm going to show you a result of my one of my students in a workshop um i have a regular workshops um, actually, I had a workshop today morning. <laughs> this is why I'm like a, a bit tired, but it's fine. Um, and in the second class, he was able to do this building. Um, it is not because I'm telling him what to do, but it is because he is thinking and asking himself what is, uh, what is the command that I need. Uh, how I can do it. So if I'm if I'm going to give you tips and tricks to model something complicated as uh, this one, um, this is like a Zaha building in Morocco. Um, and you can easily find the images. And it is the same technique as if you would like to model something like this one and this one, 
or this one? It is all the same and it all needs the same technique. So let's, let's discuss this one. If you remember what we just finished um, in this building, um, in this building, uh, being to front, yes. In this building, we just started by drawing the edges and then generating the surfaces. And when I give you more complex building, it is the same as, don't feel worried. Um, there is in um, just a minute, I can go for panels, lights, and there is like a ground plane. I just close this ground plane. Maybe I'll open the sun and the skyline. It might help a little bit. So this building is just uh, edges. You can see these black lines. It's just the edges. He started by drawing a lot of lines. A lot of, you know, holy lines, control point curves. It, I'm just giving you how it can be done. I'm not doing it anyway. And when you just, you can draw it like open curve or close the curve anyway. I don't, I, I have no preference just for now. And after drawing this, he started moving the points. So you, yeah. I believe I have to go to, yeah. He started moving the points so you can, you know, manipulate the lines until you have these edges. And he was like a first time to use the software, but it needed one week to think of how to do it. And still it can be done better. Like there is a stall, still there is errors right here and some other errors. Uh, but the point is why I'm opening this file. You should see some student outcomes so you can understand um, what mistakes that might happen, what problems. If you look here, the surface had a problem. So why the surface had a problem? Because it is generated using loft. And loft somehow is a tricky. If you have like an advanced surface, you can't use loft. Sorry, just one minute. Yeah. This is a clear one. And how to use loft? Um, as I told you, if I have a very, very advanced uh, curves like this one, it's not advanced at all, I understand this, but yeah, I'm just trying to draw something very complicated. Yeah, and yes, just like this. And if I have something like this, and I'm just going, I can use loft one, two, three, yes, yeah, you know, can you see? It is very irregular surface. But if I were you, I might think of why don't we draw like a line between these two one, two curves like here, and then maybe I can have a cross section right here and then manipulate this cross section I'm just giving you example. I'm not, you know, doing it. And then, um, cubit has up. <laughs> and then I go for sweep to rails, first rail, second rail, a cross section. It's just example. It will follow my lead. You know, it is more unique than just doing it like this. It will become very intersected and complicated and so on. And the much you, uh, the, the more sections you have, the more accurate form you have. So maybe sweep to rails is very critical to be used if you have an advanced geometry that needs a lot of manipulation that like this one. If we take, if I take a copy of this one and just select one piece. Yes, you can, you can have like, I can have this edge. I need to change my background. So display, solid color. Um, am I in rendered? Yes, yes, solid. 
application setting. Okay, let's keep it application setting just for now. If I have this as a surface, what this surface is, I, I use loft and uh, I have a problem. My surface is not accurate enough. And it looks like, you know, it is a stretch it somehow. So if I wear you, I'll go for curve. I just maximize the screen. I'll go for curve and then curve from object, drag, duplicate edge. And then I select my edge. This is an edge. And then I'll go for the other edge. Wow, that looks helpful. I take this aside. And so I have one curve and second curve. Wow. And then why don't I have, maybe I can have a cross section right here, a cross section right here, and other cross section as example, and other cross section, and other cross section, other cross section. <laughs> anyway, so right now it is two curves, but maybe I have to uh, split here and here and have this as a continuous cross section and these ones as a rail. But let's do an experiment. It's just experimental. So sweep two rails, first rail, second rail, and then cross section, first one, second one, and then third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Okay. Can you see? Ah, there is an optical illusion right here. So I messed up. I have to snap to the object. Yes. You have to take care of this. Optical illusion is most likely to happen. If I wear you, I do my best. Okay. Back again. Just sweep to rails, first rail, second rail, and then cross sections, first one, second one, and so on. Just keep it from the same start point. It is so important to start from the same start point. And so, wow. Now I have my surface and it is much better than his surface. Yes, because I used the sweep to rails. Wow, but why this one is not closed? Let's do it again. First rail, second rail, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you just locked, notice, the command bar, it is select sweep shapes. S means you can select a lot of curves. It's fine. And then, like when it gives you this, you can refit rails, it's fine. Maintain height, it's fine. Ah, close the sweep is not available. So I have to do it like this and then do it again and select this one and it will be done. So I have a very clear and advanced surface that will be helpful for you to use later on. And it is, as you see, is very clear, very neat. And this is just sweet phrase. There is more advanced way if you use network, but it is so complicated for beginners and intermediate level users. So I don't prefer to use network if you are um, intermediate or basic user, I'm sorry. Um, and what else? Again, if, yeah, this is Sketchfab. You can just open Sketchfab and write down Ahmed Hassab, A-H-M-E-D-H-S-S-A-B, B for book. Uh, with no spaces, yeah. <laughs> and you can find the models are uploaded. And it is up there just so my students can use them while learning how to use the software. And you can find the model right here. And you can explore using this like platform with uh, your VR. Um, so you can find um, many other 
uh, I have a few detailed models that you can explore um, if you are using like a VR set or something like this. Uh, it will, that would be helpful for you to explore. Uh, we will discuss these tabs right now before we move to the next example. So uh, where is the, yeah, that is it. So you can um, lock, yeah, there is a problem right here. Why he has a problem? Because they are intersecting like very intersecting and this is a mistake. And if if what well, how I can do it, how I can have this wall and this one and they not intersected. Let's go back for the model. Um, where it is, yeah, it is right here. This one is transparent. I will I will make it more opaque so I can work on yeah, transparency. Wow, it is not responding. Oh, okay, oh, this one. Yeah, like this. Yes, this would be more helpful and it makes the color like orange. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I, firstly, as I told you earlier, if I'm working with something like this and it is my student work, so I have to send it back to him, like fix it. Um, so I'll just draw a guideline for myself and then I'll select these and this one and I will take a copy. Enter and move or just write down copy and take a copy. And so uh, this is a mistake. I move it like here. And this one is one open poly surface. So I just explode this one. So this one is a surface. So how to have them like intersected? There is a lot of ways. There is a lot of possibilities. The first one is I can go for curve from object and then extract ISO curve and then select the surface. It will ask me where the ISO curve will be. And I can move between U and V direction as I would like. Let's say as example, I select this one and I will snap to the edge. I believe you can, you can recognize, you have a good perception and you can see this edge highlighted. And if I move to this edge, it is highlighted and so on. So now I have a ISO curve. So I can move this one and it's now to the ISO curve like perpendicular. So this one is just touching the surface. It is 100% just touching. Okay. And that's perfect if this building is going to be built in reality. And let's say as example, if I need to have an opening right here, I believe everyone and um, um, I remember when I was, I started using Rhino like 2008 and I was like in my first year architecture into faculty of engineering. I'm graduate from Cairo University, Egypt. Um, so I remember when Zaha, Allah um, used to draw this kind of lines and opening to remember this kind of opening. Um, she made a lot of proposals in Kuwait and so on um, that has this kind of opening. How to have this opening on a double curved surface at this one? Um, I take this aside so I can move more easier. I believe you can see the methodology I'm using. I'm just taking copies with the guideline, the rectangle I just drawn. So it will help me to move easier. And then I'll start drawing the line. What I mean by this, if you remember when I told you when you would like to do something, you have to just go for the icons, just look for the icons, search the two parts. There is something out there. So you will find interpolate a curve on surface. So I just zoom out again. And 
I'll go back again for this and select enter create a curve on surface. So now it is asking me to select a surface that I'm going to draw a curve on. And this will be so helpful as I can just draw a curve that is responding to a surface equation, the surface curvature topography, or how you would like to describe it. So I'll just select this surface, start curve. You can just draw the opening responding to the surf curvature, surface curvature. As you can see, it is a domestic transformation. And when you have this opening, I'll draw like a few other curves. But if I wear you, I move to wireframe so I can see where I am. And you can draw many points as you need. It's fine. Um, yeah, I'll just draw other point. I'm not doing it precise. As I mentioned earlier, I'm just giving you tips and tricks how to do it and you know it is bombing out here so i have to draw a point here so you just have to cancel it and draw it back again and to add more points so the curve will stuck with these kind of points there is no better way as i think and so right now i have my surface that can be splatted. I can split the surface using these curves. I'm sorry. I go for split, select the object, enter, cutting curves, enter. Oh, wow, I have my object. Yes, it is done. And so I need a thickness for this surface. So what thickness is? Ah, I need to take a rest. <laughs> What second is this? I'll just give you that is it. You have to just go for offset surface. So if you remember when I told you that there is a normal and this arrow is representing the normal and I would like to have it on the opposite direction. How to do it? It's fine. As I told you, you just have to go for the taskbar and there is flip and it is just flip. And there is a distance. You have to write down the distance you would like or you need, but I don't know what distance because I'm not using dimensions right now. So I'll just select the distance in the viewport and then press enter. Wow. So I have my surface. And I have this opening. Okay. And you can just go right here. And um, if I were you, I will just, I will go for properties, object. I used to use a new material, customize. This is my best way. I think so. And just give it a color. It just, for illustration, it is not important at all for now. Um, I'll use a new material, custom material, and I'll give it just other color that might be helpful for me right, just right now. And so if you remember, when I used fillet edge, ah, I, I don't know how to write it as I'm an Arabic speaker. So English is my second language. Might be I have um, spelling mistakes, but Ryan will help you. So it is just fix it uh, to fill it edge. I'll select the edge and then it will ask me for the radius. I don't know what radius I should use. So I'll just press enter and you have a visualization right here. Control right click to zoom in. So you can use, you can see the edge. You can see the the radius, I will minimize this to something and then present it. So just calculating the edge. Wow, I have it done. Wow. This is how you can do it. Just go simply and take your time. It's fine. And it is not about how many commands do you know. It is more about how to do it and like if you have a logical thinking, you will be able to do it. As I told you, 
I remember in 2008 when Dubai was doing their futuristic architecture, I was like, what is happening? It is just three commands. <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> well, it's fine. Nowadays, it is not about if you can do like something advanced. It is more if how to construct this something. This is why I have my interest into digital fabrication. Um, anyway, so regarding this example, we can move to the next one. Um, yeah, this is my desktop. Um, and Sketchfab, like if if we are talking about this specific example, it is very easy to do. But the point is, if, if there are possible, looks like my Vega card is stuck. Yeah. Um, yeah. Refresh. Uh oh, it will take time. Anyway, let's say as example this one. It is, it it was a proposal uh, for a for a for a wall that didn't happen. But the point is how to do something like this. How to use Rhino to think of as example a proposal for an exhibition or. Um, now, uh, just for like, um, not for construction, not for fabrication, but just the modeling itself. So as example, I have my file. Yeah, this is the file. So let's say as example, if I have a curve like this one, yeah, and uh, I just delete a few points, it's fine. And I just get copies, yeah. And open the points and start. I start like playing with. You can just play with the curve. You can just delete points if you would like. It's fine. Rhino is so easy to use. And if you have any questions, as I told you earlier, just log in into my uh, the server into technical support channel and anyone from my team or assistants will help you uh, if you need like a, a very urgent support or something like this. And then I'll go with loft as example. I select the curves like this, press enter. So I have my double curved surface and so if I, if I need like, if I am thinking of how to do something like this, I have to, to ask myself at the beginning what this is. So this looks like something that has a sickness and there is like a cut and these cuts are parallel to each other. So firstly, I need something that has thickness that and then I generate this cut. Okay. So at the beginning, I will just have a thickness. And as I just told you, just go for offset surface and give me a distance. I'm not using um, other dimensions right now, but let's say as example, if I'm doing a design. And at a certain point, I have to convert this design to something real. What I have to do, what dimension I'm using, how to calculate this. It's so easy. You have just to boundary box, bounding box. And so you have a bounding box that contains your object. And so this is why we have a ghosted viewport where you can see the inside and the outside at the same time. So you can write down distance and select the points. It will tell you this is like 61 meters. And this one is like, wow, 104 meters. And this one is like 70 meters. Yeah, <laughs> I'm doing something very big, but it's fine. 
So the sickness, now I can give it a distance. I can write down if this is 60, it can be just three. And there is options like solid yes or no. If it is no, it will be just an offset, but making it yes, it will be like a solid object. I just present it. Wow, Th this is fine. So right now I have my object, my closed poly surface, it's fine. But I have this irregular edges. If I were you, I would just draw a rectangular, a box, box, box as this one. And I will make sure that this box is cutting through. It is cutting through the whole object. So I can have a clear cut, like a clear cut. <laughs> and then I go for solid tools and then subtract or Boolean difference. It will ask me, what will you subtract with? I will select these ones. Wow, it is a clear cut right now. So I have my surface with the thickness and the question is how to generate these cuts there is a command called contour what the command is contour yes contour so i'll just select this one and write down contour lines it will ask me for a base point if i wear you and i'm a first time user i'll go for front and then I have my first point and then perpendicular is asking me direction to perpendicular. I select this one perpendicular distance between. I'll just use a viewport. Yeah, this is fine. I write down group Y to make it easy for me to just go back again and select the group. If it is not grouped, this would be a problem because you have to select them one by one. Let's go again and I'll contour again in the other direction, like from the front view in this direction with the same distance, that's fine, and then group, yeah. So I take the poly surface away, and then I have my cuts. I'll go for solid, through planar curve straight, and with the direction I have to make sure it is moving from this direction to that direction. Yes. And the distance can be like one, it's fine. So this is the first cut. I can, let's go for shaded mode so you can have it like visible. I just created this cuts, but I don't have like them in a group. Am I going to select them one by one? No. Just go for select and then select lost created object. So you have them all and then group. And then I select these ones, solid, through planar curve straight, and then one again. It's fine. And then select lost created and then group. So now I have this. So if this, if you don't like this, you have to regenerate again the contour lines and select the direction as you would like. It, is, it will respond to the two points you will use. Um, and it can be like diagonal, uh, straight lines, or whatever, what you selected. Okay, so this is this example. It is just a glimpses on how to do it. Let's move for this one. What this one is? This is like, um, I'm sorry if it is glowing. Um, maybe one of my assistants just changes the properties of 3D setting. Maybe we can do it just now with, together. Using Sketchfab, you can go for um, 3D setting. And there is like by the end, there is a lot of options like uh, Bloom. Yes, safe setting. It is not glowing. And then exit. Yeah. So we have the surface right now. So what this is, it is one of the buildings. And if you remember when I told you, it is the same technique to model something like this. 
but it, it needs a lot of time and effort. It needs from you to draw down this kind of star curve that will be used again and again and again to generate this kind of surfaces. So if I would like to do this surface, what I have to do or what I can do, I take a print screen using snapping tool so I can sketch on this image. So you have this edge. Yes. And then this other edge. Yes. And then you have this cross section curves. Draw as many cross sections as you can. And then just a sweep to rails. And so you will have your surface generated. So I have my two rails and a lot of possible cross sections. And so I'll have the result. So if I were you, I draw down that star at the beginning and then rebuild that star and start manipulating the points of the star, having multiple copies in the Z direction, offsets and so on, and thinking of the edges and creating surfaces along the edges. Um, this might be helpful. I believe sweep to rail will be critical in modeling something complicated at these kind of surfaces. It is not complicated, I understand, but to have a, a smooth surface, it is complicated. It needs like a sweep to rails, um, network of curves and so on to have this clear, smooth surface that would accept graph super paneling and editing. And like other example, um, it is the same, it's just something experimental to just show you how and what possibilities and how this is very easy to model. How this is easy, Ahmed. It, it don't look like it's easy. Um, it's very easy, actually. If you just think of this one, it is just a continuous manipulated surface. Let's say as example, I will take a print screen again to tell you what and how. And so if this is a surface I have, I'll go for the red band and then just a minute, you have here a closed like this, like this, a closed edge. And then the other closed edge, yes. This is how, and, and so on, and so on, and so on. This is how you can do it. You, you should look for the closed surfaces, the closed loop, um, the edges, and so on. And when you find this specific edge, you can just, at the beginning, you have to draw this closed curve like on C plane, just on the ground on zero, zero, zero on XY plane. And then you have to rebuild this specific curve and then to a third degree. And maybe you can use like, you, you have think you have to think of like, I should have a point here and two points here. So it's three points and like three other here, it's six points and three other here, it's nine points. And like one point here, it's 10 points and three other here, it's, um, 13 points and so on. You have to think of how many points do I need and then repel the curve. So you have um, like um, a regular number of points on the curve that you can insert point or remove point later on, it's fine. And then you should go for show control points or just function F10 or just F10 if you don't have a multimedia on your keyboard and then start manipulating the points. So you have a continuous manipulated curve and then the other curve and then the cross sections. So you have the first continuous single surface and then the other surface and so on and so on till the end. Till you have this like composition. It, it was like a, a proposal for a building on one of um, pre-courses pre-design courses um, in my PhD. I'm working on my PhD nowadays. Um, 
it was like a building technology course. So I have to do like data extraction for all these services and so on, but it's fine. Let's now just talk about just how to model these services and it's fine. So we discussed right now how to do this kind of services and this kind of services. And this is just the same. If you just look at this one, it is like a surface. I'll tell you how to do it. It's fine. Um, I know I'm, I have like just the five minutes till the two hours finishes. So I still have a lot of other examples. Actually, I, I have, I prepared a lot of examples, even I believe I don't have time for them um, because I, I, I thought there might be some questions that might, you know, need a model to discuss. This is why I have other models, but it's fine. Um, you can keep asking me questions, as I told you earlier, uh, when you go for uh, reparameterize technical support, I'll give you the technical support. Me, my team, I have a, a team that will help you, my assistants and so on. Anyway, let's go for this surface, rebuild surface. And I prefer to use seven. Seven, seven, in Arabic, in Arabic. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm just doing this surface. And this surface actually, if, if you are talking about fabrication, uh, this was a proposal for a, a, a facade that um, like indoor facade that would be like milling, will be milled using a CNC and this is a massive wood. Um, so it's very, very easy to do. And then there is a plugin called, uh, a lot of plugins actually that you can use, but there is like RhinoCam that you can use for extracting the data, the decode path for the NC Studio. So you can use the CNC and cut this, um, subtract the, the wood and so on. Anyway, let's model the wall itself. So if I have this surface and then F10, and I started like manipulating the surface itself like this, and maybe like this again. So I have the surface itself right now. And then I'll have like this. So I have a sickness. I'll just control shift. I'm selecting control shift on the keyboard, still pressing control shift, and then select this surface. And then transform set XYZ. I'll go for Z. What is transform set XYZ? It will um, like make the result equal in what you selected at the point that you will select. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not a buzzer. But when I select this point, <coughs> you will have a closed surface like this one. Okay. So now I have my bulk material. And then if you remember contour lines, I do my contours in this direction. And then like seven, yes. Seven cuts, solid, through planar curve straight. So I will just one. So I have this like this, yes. And so I will just go for pulley and difference. And then I will start cutting them. I know this will take time, but you can do it in Grasshopper. But now we are just discussing Rhino. So I'm giving you glimpses on, on how to think on something without knowing grasshopper. Could you provide the Discord link, please? Thanks. Yes. If you just go for my website, thanks for question. If you go for my website, it will, um, and then reparameterize just an NGO. I have an NGO that is helping, um, but it, we use Arabic more, but join now. You can ask your question in English, it's fine. Um, and you can ask me on Digital Future, but uh, we don't have a technical supported channel. This is why um, I told you about my um, technical supported channel. Anyway, and so um, Boolean difference, select this and then the point and so on, you will have them, but maybe sometimes it didn't. So maybe you have to like, just make it bigger. It's fine. It's totally fine. You just need that to be fully intersected so it can cut along. Yes. 
So you have this like this. It's fine. Uh, it's very easy to do. And this would be so helpful for you when you are like looking for possibilities or just thinking on how to do it and so on. Um, and this one is the same. It's very easy as we just discussed. Um, and this one as well. Uh, it is just a cross section in a building. Um, and if you look here, it is like a multiple surfaces together. Um, and if if I ask you how to do it, I believe it's fine. It looks like it has a lot of elements, uh, but it is just, you can just create the first surface, the, the surface that is like this one. And then if you remember, I rebuilt the surface and increase the number in new direction and decrease the number in V direction. So I can have a lot of like ISO curves, vertical ISO curves, and then you can cut this kind of panels and you can just do it in Grass Super and so on. And this truss is made in, there is a plugin called Launchbox. It can generate a space truss like this one. But if you use for the upper surface patch, it will not work. So you have to use loft options that I told earlier. Uh, Hasef, thank you for your time. We'll be doing another session for Grasshopper. Um, we have plans for future sessions, but I don't know if I will be the person teaching Grasshopper or not. But yes, we will have as digital features. Um, I don't know. I don't remember if I mentioned that I am. Uh, a member of Digital Futures team. Um, so we just collaborate together and I'm, I'm so happy to work with them. They are doing their best and I'm willing to do what I can. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Okay, we have other session. Okay, uh, so thanks for your time. Um, sorry, we have to end right now. Um, yeah. Um, if you have any other questions, just send me. Um, I'll be helping. You can ask on Digital Futures channel in general. Um, but if you have a lot of screenshots and so on, and you would like to send your file, um, you can go for technical support and then send your file. Um, I'm happy to help anyone anytime for hour. Yeah. Thanks for everyone. See you next time. Bye.